of History Gets Real. I am your host, Greg Getz. Now, before I get into today's topic, I would just want to talk about something first to try and give you a lay of the land in a little bit of a backstory of what exactly I'm going to be talking about. So, growing up in the United States, especially attending public schools, um, we are not really given that much information when it comes to the history of the world other than European history and then traveling to the United States and quote-unquote discovering it. Uh, We are given a little bit of a crash course on some of the significant people that came from Europe to the new land or North and South America. Uh, It's Asian history is brushed over Australian history like non-existent pretty much. So The point behind this episode is to give you a little bit of information and more knowledge to what actually happened when Europeans came to South America, specifically. Uh, The book in question that I'm going to be analyzing today is called Open Veins of Latin America. This book was made by Eduardo Galeano, and it is a very dark book. The reason why I say dark is because it does not abridge or gloss over what exactly happened when the Europeans came over. It tells you what happened. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't fun. And these were people that these atrocities were committed against. Now, whether you want to say that they were civilized or uncivilized, that is not in question. I mean, I don't really think an uncivilized people could have made the structures and civilizations that these people in Latin America created. I don't think the Aztecs could be called uncivilized. I don't think the Mayans or the Incas could be called uncivilized, just to name a few. So I want to analyze this book with you, and I want to tell you straight up from Edward Galeano how it went down when Europeans came to the United States. Because like I said, you are not given in the United States, you are not given this type of history you were told men came over skirmishes broke out they claimed their stake that was it but that doesn't go into detail unless you read outside of your classes and i encourage you to read outside of academic institutions if you haven't taken any history courses or read any history after high school please look into some it doesn't matter what it is just do some research or read some stuff on your own. I highly encourage it because there is a, there are a lot of things that you are not told going to school. Now, I don't know how much has changed since I went to school. I graduated high school in 2010, and then it was exactly what I said. You know, they glossed over the people that came over. They glossed over the civilizations that were in place in North and South America, but they did not go into detail about what happened at least to this extent. So with that being said, I am going to do an analysis of Eduardo Galeano's book, Open Veins of Latin America. Now, this is not going to be like episodes of the past. I'm going to keep it a pretty strict, well, I wouldn't really say strict. I'm going to keep it more down to earth with this one. I'm going to keep it a little bit scripted, and I'm not going to go off on any kind of tangents while I'm analyzing this book, because I want to deliver it how it should be delivered, and I don't want you to misconstrue anything that I'm saying, because what happened in Latin America and what is continuing to happen to this day is not a laughing matter, because it is, in fact, still happening to this day. So without further ado, I'm going to give you my analysis of Open Veins of Latin America. So, it presents a prose-style documentation of the exploitation of Latin America and its inhabitants. The title, Open Veins, may not mean very much at first, but after reading his book, it becomes clear that his meaning is that the Western world cut into the heart of Latin America and proceeded to bleed it of its natural resources. Now, here's a history textbook that I was told to read when I took this Latin American course. It was by two gentlemen, Charlotte and Burns, and it was called Latin America, Latin America and, and Interpretive History. 
Now, this book gives the reader an objective interpretation of Latin America from the time of European discovery until the modern times, whereas Galeano's book is a graphic storytelling of the atrocities committed by European by the Europeans upon their discovery and the continued extortion and occupation of Latin America by the Europeans and later the United States. The problem with some textbooks is that it is just a regurgitation of facts and dates, with the intent of giving the readers just the basic knowledge of the subject without delving too much into linear situations of the time, making them boring and predictable. We all, we're all used to that. While Galeano is linear in his writing, he succeeds by putting you in the shoes of the Latin Americans rather than an outsider looking in. Now, just so you are aware, Open Veins is a nonfiction biography of the economic and po political development of Latin America and the impact of European powers and the United States. Galeano paints a descriptive picture of how the natives of Latin America were mistreated by Europeans in search of, for honor and riches, and how the land and natural resources were exploited by foreign entities. It is not your typical nonfiction book filled with dates and a boring political timeline. Galeano splits the book into three different parts. Part one deals with the, the discovery and exploitation of resources in Latin America when Spain and other European countries plundered the ancient civilizations of Latin America and turned the natives into slaves to mine the precious metals of the region and cultivate notable agriculture to the region, such as coffee and sugar. Part two is the transition from European to U.S. involvement, who aided in developing the region to its own benefit economically by political and militaristic coercion. Finally, part three is a reflection of Latin American politics seven years after the book's first publication. In the first chapter, ominously titled Lust for Gold, Lust for Silver, Galeano gives us a little bit of a background into Spain and their thirst for discovery and wealth. From the very beginning, natives of Latin America could not have predicted the horror that followed the Spanish. It did not take long for inhabitants to be wiped out, much like what happened to the Caribbean island populations when they were exterminated in the gold mines. You want more on that? I'll give it to you. Galeano goes into a story of when the Europeans first landed on the Caribbean islands and started mingling with them, they discovered gold. So, what did the Europeans think was the best thing to do? They subjugated the Caribbean uh, natives and forced them to start digging in the mines. Cavins, starvation, dehydration, public beatings, and men, women, children were all hung up by their necks in like the town squares and on the roads as a symbol for what was to happen if you did not do the work that the Europeans forced you to do. And you know what they did to themselves to try and avoid this work because they figured it was a better alternative than being slaves? Mothers would kill their children and then kill themselves to avoid being slaves to the Europeans. Just let that sink in for a minute. Mothers would kill their children and then kill themselves so that they were not enslaved. The inhabitants of the Caribbean islands were exterminated. Then they had to bring in more slaves through the uh, transatlantic slave trade from Africa or from other parts of Latin America in order to continue mining for gold because all the inhabitants of the Caribbean islands were exterminated in this process. They don't teach you, how to teach you that in school, do they? So right off the bat, Galeano gives us a horrific look at what happened to the natives of Latin America. By the end of the 18th century, Brazil laid prostate after the Portuguese and British stripped it of almost all of its resources, excluding diamonds. This was the case for most of Latin America, even after the power shifted to the United States, thanks to the Moreau Doctrine of 1823. With the Monroe Doctrine, as well as a series of other legislations passed by the United States government, the United States declared themselves the protector of the Western Hemisphere and proceeded to intervene politically and militarily in Latin American affairs they deemed a threat to their national security, or that might disrupt their financial interests, God forbid. The U.S. became dependent on natural resources found in Latin America, 
such as petroleum, aluminum, copper, zinc. This is where Galliano's writing seems to take a turn, from my perspective at least. In the earlier parts, it was as if he was telling the readers the horrible story of what happened in Latin America, rather than spouting numbers and dates. When he transitions to talking about the U.S. involvement in Latin America, he loses the narrative touch, and it almost presents itself as a court document, or official statement that you would hear presented at a press conference or a board meeting. Galliano builds the foundation of the next story for his book, which is the U.S. military machine and its dependence on Latin American resources. The narrative is put on pause to fill us in on what has been happening and why the U.S. is so dependent on Latin, Latin American resources. But it doesn't take long for him to revert back to his narrative style because you just, once you get past that hump of him pretty much leading up to significant U.S. involvement, you know, when he's literally just laying down the foundation and not giving a narrative type writing to his book, it jumps right back into the narrative style and you just cannot put it down because you just want to keep knowing. I mean, this is stuff that you don't really know or that you haven't heard about at least. So once he gets past laying down this foundation, then he sucks you right back in with his narrative style writing and it's, it's really good. Here's a line from his book to try and give you an example of what the narrative style writing is. The cemetery creaks. Beneath the graves, countless tunnels have been dug, with openings barely wide enough for the men who disappear into them, like rabbits in search of tin. So while his narrative is extraordinarily strong and it keeps the reader's attention, these breaks in the story do tend to pull you from your immersion and it does kind of confuse you, but it's not that it doesn't take long for you to get sucked right back into it. So the end of chapter two is talking about the 13 colonies and their economic insignificance. And the chapter three begins in 1969 when the U S landed on the moon, obviously context must be built. So that large gap, you know, it's, it's understandable. What really captivated me as a reader is the way he writes. While it is a nonfiction book and it is based on fact, it reads like any other story, which makes it even more convincing. We as readers look for books that captivate us and wrap us up into its narrative, making us feel like we are there experiencing these things that are happening to the different characters involved. The difference, however, is that these are not characters, and this is not a fantasy. This book focuses on the truth, and the truth of the matter is that Latin America was forced to dig its own grave, and later it was thrown in it. Perhaps that is just the meaning of open veins. The natives of Latin America were forced to mine, farm, and work the very land that they lived on for centuries, and not even for their own benefit. It was for the benefit of people that were across the ocean. Latin Americans were, did not get to keep the fortunes that they found on their own land, the fortunes their ancestors died to find. They were stolen by foreigners, for foreigners to feed the U.S. war machine, and to try and alleviate the debt that Spain had gathered over a few decades. So they were forced to die for other countries on the land that they grew up on. It's, it's what's most heartbreaking. Now, I mentioned the narrative sucks you in and makes you feel like you are experiencing these things from the native's point of view, and I believe that is exactly why Galliano wrote it, wrote it that way. Other textbooks, you know, they just give you facts, they give you dates, and they just try and regurgitate these things, and they give you a more um, objective style of teaching. You know, it, everything is open for interpretation, but they don't tell you the definitive facts or everything that's entailed with it. Galliano writes a nonfiction book based on fact, and he does not shy away from going into details the dirty details of what actually happened. What really drives it home are the statistics that he adds to the narrative. Here's a quote. The Indians of the Americas totaled no less than 70 million when the foreign conquerors appeared on the horizon. 
A century and a half later, they had been reduced to 3.5 million. 70 million! And then 150 years later, 3.5 million. Not all of that was due to war, mind you. Europeans carry diseases like tetanus, smallpox, and various venereal diseases that Latin Americans had never been introduced to before. Therefore, their bodies were not equipped to fight them off. No matter the way they died, 67 million people is beyond atrocious. And Galeano mentions these statistics to drive home the point that Latin America was taken for all it had to offer. Not just in its resources and its land, but also in its people. Latin Americans were not treated like people. Sure, the Spanish crown signed papers stating that natives were to be treated with respect, but, I mean, what power does a piece of paper have across the world? The, the crown may have signed this piece of paper, but were there people or subjects going to adhere to this order? How would the crown know that, the, that these people were being mistreated? There's no way of knowing. Are you going to constantly check in on them? No. It didn't happen. They didn't stick to the order from the crown, because it didn't matter. The crown wasn't going to interfere. They delegated these individuals to oversee their foundations and everything that they had set up in Latin America, and were like, yeah, just, you know, treat them with respect, but they didn't enforce it. Their main goal was to try and get as many resources as they could, and however they could. Didn't matter the casualties, just as long as they got what they wanted. Open Veins of Latin America is a beautifully written narrative that provides a much-needed interpretation on history. The sad fact is that history is gruesome. It's happened to every civilization in every corner of the world. Foreigners invade, innocents die, land is stripped... Civilizations are just wiped off the face of the earth. Aztecs are gone. There are a few Mayans that still exist, or Mayan ancestors that still exist in South America. Not a lot, but a few. And they're still being subject to persecution, even now to this day. It never stops, and that's what's unfortunate about history. And I think that's a something that we need to start wrapping our heads around. I'm not going to try and get political with this. Bad stuff has happened in the past. There is no denying that. It's happened to everyone, everywhere. Chinese, Japanese, Jewish, Christian, Muslim, black, white, brown. It doesn't matter. It's happened to everyone. Some people have suffered more than others, but everyone has suffered at the hands of people that look like them or people that look nothing like them. Color separates us now, but that should not be the case, because we are all still humans. We are the human species, the human race, and it's really unfortunate that we are still suffering from these things today, that it is still affecting our society. I mean, the Europeans traveled to the quote-unquote new world back in the 1400s, subjected the native inhabitants of this land to genocide, stripped them of all they had, stripped them of their dignity, and used them as tools for their own benefit. And it didn't just stop there. It still hasn't stopped. There's, there's still people out there around the world that are still subject to this kind of treatment. And it should not be that way. And I don't mean to get on this soapbox, but if I'm going to do a podcast that revolves around history... I am going to deliver history. I'm not going to whitewash it. I'm not going to break it down and give you the bare minimum. I'm going to tell it like it was. And history has sucked. It's been terrible. We need to stop living in the past and we need to move forward. That is what I feel is the point of some of these books. I don't think Galliano wrote this book to try and make people feel bad. He wanted to inform people. He didn't want anyone's pity. He wanted people to have the knowledge that they are not given in school of what happened 
in South America, Central America. What kind of historian would I be if I did not include other parts of the world? History taught in the United States public education system focuses on the Western aspect. You barely learn anything about Asia. You barely learn anything about the Middle East. Hell, you don't learn anything about Africa. You barely learn anything about South America. The only thing that you do learn is that Europeans came here. That's it. It's my job to try and inform you guys of stuff that happened. Give you a breakdown of things that you have not learned. And if you don't like that, then I'm sorry. But I'm not going to stop. I'm going to give you different aspects and different tellings of history. History is gruesome. It's harsh. It's sad. But it's real. Galliano knew this. And wanted to tell the story of Latin America as it is. As it was. It may have been stumbled upon by Columbus. But he had his mind made up on what he was looking for. And he was not going to let anything stand in his way. Neither was Cortez. Neither was Magellan. While there are moments in this book that derail you from the narrative... Galliano does not take long to get the train going again and grab your attention. This is what history is, and what more history books should aspire to be. History is not all about facts and dates. While yes, those are important, yes, you need to know what date things happened, who it happened to, where it happened, why it happened. Yes, of course. History is part of humanity. And it needs to be told like how it happened. From the best to the worst. That is the only way that we can learn from the past. Galliano does his best to inform his readers that Latin America suffered a horrific fate and continues to fight the same fight from centuries ago. I'm sorry if this episode upset you. I'm sorry if you didn't like what I had to say. But it had to be said. I know I've joked around and delivered on my past episodes a little more crass and a little more uncensored than you know what you may be used to but this is something that I know for sure a lot of my listeners are not used to recent political agendas and recent fights in the justice system have been trying to include some of these aspects of history to be involved in the public education system and I am very glad for that, and I hope that fight continues, and I hope that we are able to start including the truth, actual history, in the classrooms, because that is the only way to teach history. You cannot cater it to a certain group of people. You cannot use it to manipulate or mold young minds however you see fit or whatever you want from them. History needs to be taught like it was. And unfortunately, that is not being done. Next episode, I'm going to give you a little bit of an insight on the American Revolution. That one is not going to be as serious as this one, because it is kind of funny a little bit. But I, I wanted to give this episode the justice that it deserves. Because Lord knows history classes do not give Latin America or any other country in the world it's justice in retelling its histories i cannot speak for history classes that take place in other countries i cannot speak for them i can only speak for the history classes that i have experienced in the united states and the united states history classes in public education do not give justice to history i had to learn these things on my own or i had to learn them in a higher education system and unfortunately Education is so fucking horrendously expensive in the United States, not a lot of people can afford to go there. Thank you, GI Bill. Speaking of which, happy belated Veterans Day to my fellow veterans out there. I hope you all had a good time. I hope you all got your free meals from different restaurants. Uh, female veterans, I hope you and your boyfriend did not have uh, an issue at restaurants where your husband or boyfriend was uh, mistakenly thought to be the veteran and you were not 
That's happened to my wife and I a few times. People say, oh, thank you for your service. Or, you know, oh, you can't park there. That's active military parking. It's just like, oh, she's the active military member. I'm not. Don't don't look at me like that. Mm -mm. I hope you enjoy this episode. While I'm not going to deliver a lot of episodes like this, there are going to be some episodes that are going to be serious. And I hope that does not deter you from enjoying my podcast. Because, as I said, this is a history podcast. I'm not, I'm not going to brush over topics. Some topics need to be told like they are. Like this one, for instance. If I'm going to analyze a book that of this caliber, like Galeano's, I'm going to tell it how Galeano wanted it to be told. And I hope that he would appreciate how I retold or analyzed his book. Because it was a heartbreaking thing to read. I encourage you to read it yourselves so that you can see what I'm talking about. It's called Open Veins of Latin America. Eduardo Galeano is the author. Check it out if you want to. I know they have it on Amazon. You can get it for pretty cheap on there. Check out your local library or uh, look on your Kindle or whatever to see if you can find it. I encourage you to read it. It is worth reading. It's not for the faint of heart, though. That is all I have for today. Again, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I definitely enjoyed bringing it to you. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, follow it, uh, check out my Instagram, History Gets Real, for updates and uh, history of the day information, you know, things that happen in history on certain days. I'm going to start doing that now. Uh, make sure you check out my YouTube channel where all of my uh, podcasts are going to be uploaded. I'm going to start doing some side things on YouTube as well, so just keep your eye open for that. And I hope you all have a great day. Thank you very much.